the opportunity comes up for the Cruiserweight um, Classic Tournament, what all kind of transpired with that? You got eliminated, what, second round, and then were offered a contract after that? Yeah. So, so I, again, got to thank one of the good brothers, Claudio, for putting my name out there. Uh, I also helped that I was in Florida already. So, yeah. you know, WWE was like, okay, cool. I ain't got to pay Did nothing. Did you move to but, Florida because of wrestling or you moved down there because of teaching? No, I moved down there because my daughter was going to be born in Florida. And again, I didn't want to be that dad to to not be in her life. And then, like I said, in 2016, when I got a car, finally, she moved back to Jersey and I got stuck here. So I was like, ah, of course. <laughs> but uh, no, so I was I was um, I, I just wrote about this in my book, which I'm writing. And I was oh. 27, 28 and I make gear. And I just like had this epiphany that I was like, man, I did a lot of things like to me that at that time, 30 was like the no, no number. Like people were talking about. So like, right. if you didn't make it by then you weren't making it. And I, you know, I had this like moment where I was like 20 or blood boil. a little bit now I'm like, but I feel, I feel 20. I feel I so much better, like mentally and physically that I did. Like when I was 20, like, do I feel like shit? Yeah, I do. But like, I don't <laughs> you know how to at manage the same time. It. Yeah. 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 So, um, what were we talking about? My bad. I don't know. Um, moving to Florida and getting oh, yeah. up there and getting. Situated. So, yeah, I was like 27, 28. And, uh, you know, I was talking to my girl. I said, yo, this number is approaching. And if I don't get signed by WWE, I did Japan. I did impact like spot shows for them. You know, I did Mexico. I did everything I could that maybe that's what life had like given me. And then I just remembered, uh, you know, Claudio giving my name out. I remember hearing rumblings of the Cruiserweight Classic. And I was like, who do I need to email? What shows do I need to be on to get seen? Like yeah. I just started kicking it at an overdrive. I, nutrition was up the wall. Like I learned nutrition, learned how to really work out. Like I just wanted to be different. So that way people were like, many abs. Yeah. <laughs> the low carb. I need my carbs. I need my carbs. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I need my carbs. <laughs> so, uh, so I think uh, Claudio and Gabe Sapolsky had put in my name, you know, cause I had worked with Gabe before with Evolve and Dragon Gate USA and all these other promotions. And, um, you know, he, he saw me as a good talent and saw me, you know, as an opportunity for maybe for me to sink or swim. And that's all I wanted to do. Like, I just wanted an opportunity. I didn't want yeah. to push or any, I, let me sink or swim on my own. Like if I fail, at least I fail on my own. And, um, you know, after the first round, after wrestling Ali, which we killed it in five minutes and it, everybody, we had the shortest amount of time too in, in the Cruiserweight Classic first round. And we felt disrespected, but at the same time, we're like, you know what, it. let's, let's show them that we don't need that much time to go out and kill it. Let me show them like what cruiserweight style is like just in and out and then bang it out. And that's what got me my contract that I think that match, how we, how we were able to do, you know, time management, how we were able to put it together because me and Ali, we thought WWE before WWE, like when we put our matches together, yeah, we had some crazy spots, but like it was always about the moment, always about creating that, mis you know, that that believing that we were doing was real. Yeah. And um, I remember between right after the first round, they had a meeting and I saw all the good brothers like get called up like, hey, we need this guy, that guy. And you know what they were getting called up for? Like they were getting offered a contract, but you don't hear your name and you're like, yeah. like damn, I, I made it to the second round. I couldn't even get a like, Hey, good job. Or like a, a contract, like, you know, a contract would be nice. Yeah. But anyway, I was making Bailey's gear. And, uh, I remember a two Oh three number had called me and I'd never seen a two Oh three number in my life. And it's a Connecticut. Uh, and I was like, looked at it. I was making gear and then my phone vibrated and never vibrates. You know, I know when yeah. somebody's going to call me or something. So it was just weird that I missed it. Yeah. And I picked up and I said, hello. And he goes, Hi, is this Lindsay? And I go, yeah, who's this? And he goes, it's Darren. Or Dar I think that's Darren's name. I go, who? And he goes, William Regal. <laughs> and I go, oh, hold on yeah. one second. I said, Mr. Regal, you got to apologize. My brother is a piece of shit. I'm sorry. Uh, how can I help you? And he's like, yeah, uh, basically, we want to offer you a contract. So if anybody's talked to you, please, you know, at least hear us out after the second round. And uh, right. I, I said, thank you very much. I played it off very cool. I was uh -huh. like, super cool. I got off that phone. I called everybody and my mother. I said, yo, we're about to go to the Fed. We're about to get signed, baby. Uh -huh. I don't care what they say. We're about to get signed. And uh, then Impact hit me up. Oh. 
And I was like, ooh. I was like, let me entertain this. I like this. I like I like to see the options. Yeah. And they said, hey, we have an idea. Can you come in Tuesday? And this was the same week as the first round of WWE, uh, the Cruiserweight Classic, which was taped on a Thursday. So I'm at Impact on Tuesday. And I wrestled Mandrews as uh, my other character because I didn't um, want to jeopardize anything with Lindsay for I wanted him for the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. And Renee, we banged it. We killed it. Like, <laughs> I bet. Like people want, and I wasn't even signed to the company and they were like, yo, this, we let's do it. And I remember, um, homie snow and a couple other guys came up to me, offered me a contract and right there on the spot, I was like, no, I, I said, thank you very much for the offer, but I'm going to get signed by WWE. And this is before even having that conversation with WWE. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So again, I'm manifesting all of this. I'm like, if it, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be like, so we show up to that second round. We wrestled. I wrestled Rich Swan. Love my dude. That I saw him yesterday. Like I'd do anything for that dude. He was the one that also told me that I was gonna get signed. I was like, Nah, you lying. Shut up. And then um, hear my name get called at the end. And I was teaching at this time, and I was already like seven years in teaching. And in my head, I said, Y'all could offer me one dollar more than my contract for teaching, and I take it. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what it is. I'll take it $1 more, but it's got to be more than my teaching contract, yes. which was way, I mean, it wasn't way more, but like I was making like 35,000 a year as a teacher, like, which, and by the way, is so shocking. Like I cannot believe what teachers get paid. Oh my God. It, it, I would spend more money teaching than I was getting paid. Like it was ridiculous that there was no support. And that's why it made it a lot easier for me to leave teaching, not because of the pay, but because of the support. Yeah. And also I, I would love to teach kids to inspire them. I don't want to teach kids for a test because somebody's going to make money off of them. Like, yeah. you know, let me inspire a kid to want to come to school to feel safe or want to learn because they're going to get better because they see education the same way I saw that as an escape, yeah. right. And a portal to everything. Do you, do you teach, were you doing a thing where you were like teaching math on your social media or like doing something like you were doing something like that? I was right? tutoring kids, like people, like families would like write me live, like, Hey, my kid wants to do this. I would either bring him up in zoom or, uh, I was working with another teacher that I still talk to my boy Concepcion and we would do, he teaches physics now. So like a lot of the wrestling he uses in physics and it's like a great interaction. Oh, wow. Once a year, I'll call his classroom in my mask and we'll talk about the elimination chamber spot because he uses that in his test and all that. So it's kind of yeah. cool. Um, so when you had to make that decision to jump from being a teacher into professional wrestling, um, what were the conversations you were having at home with you and your wife? It was a for sure. One was like, why well, are we getting paid more? Because like yeah. we were struggling, like I said, and yeah. everybody struggles. But like it really was like we had a two bedroom townhouse living four people in like, you know, it was very hard. So when we had that little bit of boost income, it was like, let's get the necessities set up. So that way we're good. But it was also hard for me professionally because I saw so many teachers leave uh, when I was teaching because Florida is a transitional school for not only students, but teachers. Okay. And I would see students have a substitute for like four months, three months. And I was like, damn, they're not learning anything. And I didn't want to be that teacher to just bounce. Yeah. But also, like I said earlier, I didn't feel like I was inspiring kids to like want to be here. I would have great, great rapport with my kids. Like they loved coming to my class because they they didn't come to a math class. They came to, you know, Mr. Cordero's class who was going to be. Yeah, it was math. But like, damn, I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to feel like not like I'm in school. You know, I'm going to entertain them as a teacher. That's that's how I practice entertaining yeah. through teaching, you yeah. know. And, uh, but it was a lot easier for me to leave when I was offered because one, it was my dream, right? It was my dream, always been my dream. So like, if I had an opportunity to do it, even if I was going to fail the next day, just to say that I did it is I'm happy yeah. with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, also because like the teaching wasn't the same that I felt when I was in first grade, just because of like, I, I, get, I felt like more of it was a business than mm -hmm. inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. When you got into WWE and um, your, you know, 205 Live becomes a thing, um, Lucha House Party becomes a thing, you never got any mic time. Do you really wish that that was something 
that you were able to do to add more layers to your character. I know that that was a thing that had been, uh, you know, a bit of a point of frustration for, I believe all of you for in Lucha mm-hmm. house party is like, not, not really getting that time, not getting these layers to your character. Do you think that um, being able to jump on the mic would have helped a little bit, especially for you? I think every time they did let us on the mic, we killed it. I know toward the end, me and me and metallic were like, especially with riddle, I felt like we were killing it. And especially we were given suggestions that they were like, yeah, let's do that. And I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. And like, yeah, there were little battles that were won, but like the fact that they were like, yeah, that's cool. Let's do that. Like made it seem like, Hey, maybe I know what I'm doing. Let me kind of like, let me do my thing. But honestly, Renee, man, I just felt like I felt the role. I felt like I wasn't meant to do anything else because anything we ever pitched that was cool or different or revolutionary that I always thought was revolutionary just wasn't for us like no we just don't need that right now or like Like no so i wanted us to be i didn't want us to be in gear for any promos i was like let us be like santo and blue demon let us be like a society of luchadors of like you know dignity and and like respect and hard i wanted us to be like hard like a male version of charlie's angels where they could be cool and sexy and badass but still like get shit done and exciting and and interact with each other and uh, the original Lucha House Party idea, like we we wanted our own like mansion, like not mansion, like our own little like hot spot. Um, you know, we had uh, the red carpet, red grate or red uh, ropes. Uh, we had we had a, like a legit set that we wanted that wasn't like cost effective. Like everything that I, I literally walked through the props truck and I was like, all right, you got this. I could do that with that. You got this. Cool. Let me come back in a, two weeks with an idea and be like, look, you ain't got to pay for nothing. Like y'all got it here. Yeah. And it, it just was like, oh, these are great ideas. Just not for you or any Lucha guy right now. We just need Lucha Lucha. And I remember they would give Manny like promos and like no lines for us in the back. Because, you know, he had the he had the equity, which, you know, that's on him. That's not on him. That's on the, the company. Mm-hmm. But they he had the equity. So they gave him the lines and we were just left to do the Lucha Lucha yeah. at the end. Yeah. To the yeah. point where I had to have that conversation with somebody I'm like, hey, like, I'm talking to you just like I would talk online. Like, can we, could you throw in some other lines other than Lucha Lucha? Like there's more presence to that. And even toward the end, when we had promos and they wanted us to bust out Lucha Lucha, I would tell Metallic, like at the end, don't say Lucha Lucha. Like just say yeah to their face and then be like, nah, just don't do it. Like at the end and let them just cut it. And when they ask us like, oh, are you guys going to say Lucha Lucha? I'm like, no, like we just don't feel like <laughs> we're like not it into it right, right now. now. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, nah. It was just, it was just, it just felt like a role. And that, it, that is WWE. Everything has a role, but mm-hmm. I just was like, damn, can I have some input in this role at least? Yeah. You know, I'm yeah, realistic. I see like what you're trying to do. To, to give it something, to give it something a little more to keep you entertained, to keep people entertained, like from all aspects, it should be more collaborative. Or can we compromise on it? That would be my yeah. biggest word. Like, is there any compromise in here? And like, they would hate that word. Like <sighs> uh, the dudes that I would work with, because like, I put them on the spot. I want to know like, yo, like, are you telling me that this is how it's going to be? Or can we like be creative and be like, make this awesome? Cause I don't want to yeah. put anything half at, like, I don't want to put out something that anybody could just hold a phone up and do. Like, right. I really want to put time and effort into my stuff and make it seem like it's totally different than any other luchador or any other, like not only luchador, but you know, that is my goal to be different than every other luchador, which I feel like I have, but also be different than everybody else out there. Like yeah. busting out content, talking, like I ask every promotion, please let me talk. Let yeah. me just cut a promo. I don't care if yeah. you, you use it. Let me just do it. I just want to make sure like, yeah, my voice is heard. I got a voice. I can talk. I know I can. Let me just yeah. do it. 